Hey Summoners, how's it going? As promised, I'm here with a full list of upcoming changes for patch 12.12. My name is Nathan Ng, and I'll be your host for this video. In it, we'll be providing a full breakdown of what balance changes you should expect to see next patch. With the current game's balance being an absolute mess, we can continue to anticipate plenty of changes in the following updates. That being said, patch 12.12 will feature mostly champion changes with a couple of system adjustments to take note of. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future updates, and let's get the video started. Since we're talking about upcoming changes, we'll also include the new cosmetics that we'll likely see hit the shop next patch. We have a handful of skins coming up. Snow Moon Caitlyn, Nilawi, and Kane, as well as Ashen Knight Pantheon will be available soon. These skins provide their respective champions a more tribal, winter-themed look. In spite of summer coming up just around the corner, remember that where it's summer for some of us, it's winter elsewhere. That's it for the skins, and let's move on to the game changes next, beginning with systems. Our very first change is for the Item Knight Harvester. If anything, this is going to be a buff because the item will now include a Fiendish Codex in its recipe. In other words, players will have another purchase that they can make on the way to completing the Mythic item. Notably, it's also a purchase that will grant them an earlier access to bonus ability haste. The second system change is for Keystone Predator. Unfortunately for fans of the rune, it's set to receive a massive early game nerf, compensated by a moderate late game buff. Its early cooldown will be increased, followed by a decrease in its base damage and bonus movement speed. At later levels, however, the cooldown will end where it's currently at, but instead boasts higher base damage and more movement speed than before. In addition, the ratios are all being increased, but in the early game, the base damage nerf will usually offset this. As a result of this nerf, it will provide players less agency in the early game, taking away a lot of snowballing power that the game currently has. That being said, if you're interested in learning how to snowball your leads and carry your games, make sure you contact the coach over at ProGuides.com. We have experts for all roles and champions that have helped countless students improve and even rank up. With system changes covered, let's run through the champion changes next, beginning with the top lane. First in the top lane, we have a nerf to talk about for Dr. Mundo. His passive health regeneration will now scale with level, meaning that it'll be weaker early on, but stronger later on into the game. In addition, his ultimate healing will also be reduced at all ranks. With less healing, Mundo should be easier to deal with in the early game. Also, this nerf should put him in a more reasonable place following the durability nerfs on patch 12.10. Currently flaunting a 54% win rate overall, Riot is quickly acting to ensure that he doesn't get out of hand. Which reminds me of that creepy concept where he was just a, a giant hand. <laughs> Another nerf is coming up for Fiora. Her passive space damage is being reduced from 3 to 2% of her target's maximum HP. This is a solid nerf, and don't underestimate that 1%. For one, it's true damage, making every point of damage count, and the more important reason is that she's going to be activating her passive multiple times during a longer fight. After the durability changes, Fiora started seeing a massive improvement in her performance and is currently a dominant pick in high elo. The final nerf for top laners is for Singed. He's also seen massive improvements following the durability update. Moving forward, his slowest potency will scale with rank, and his ultimate will provide less bonus stats early on. While this is rightfully marked as a nerf, it's also buffed his late game if they ever drag on that long. But also remember that they're nerfing Predator, a rune that he uses quite often. Before moving on to the jungle, we have one last top lane change for Yorick. He's receiving buffs, or at least his minions are. His Mistwalkers and Maiden of the Mist will end up tankier than before, and the Maiden's chase range on Yorick's E will be reduced, hopefully ensuring that she runs it down less. That's it for the top lane, so let's talk about the jungle changes next. In the jungle, League's newest champion is already up for some nerfs. Though Veth has already been assessed as too strong. While her win rates did start off low, they're rapidly increasing and she's particularly powerful in low elo. Her attack range will receive a buff, but she'll face nerfs to her base health regeneration, bonus attack speed per stack, and E damage. In addition, her Q will receive a bug fix so that her ultimate won't deal double damage. Her ultimate's damage will be reduced at early ranks, the bonus attack range granted decreased, and the Void Remora health will also be decreased at early ranks. Next is a nerf for Viego. His passive healing on possession and ultimate's missing health scaling will now be both decreased. In addition, casting W into E will no longer instantly grant him stealth. It's a loss of combat stats as well as a huge piece of utility. Thus, we expect him to face a noticeably lower win rate next patch. Shaco is receiving some adjustments next patch as well. Bruiser builds have been gaining popularity, but Riot wants to encourage high risk, high reward gameplay. Thus, his defensive stats are receiving nerfs while various damage ratios are being increased next patch. It's a pretty straightforward adjustment that should make Assassin Shaco feel a lot more rewarding than going for a safer fighter build. We also got some buffs, starting with the Mumu. His Q's mana cost will be reduced significantly, while his ultimate damage will be increased at all ranks. There's a good chance that this might popularize a Mumu support again, especially since it's a pretty large mana cost reduction. Ivern is also receiving a buff. Unlike other enchanters, he continues to underperform and Riot is giving him a boost in hopes of giving him a place in the meta. His passive will cost less resources to use, his E shield is getting buffed, and Daisy is also receiving buffs to her health and resistances. Durability buffs for everybody, and that includes pets. 
Finally, we have a big buff coming up for Jarvan. First, his mana per level will be increased, but more importantly, his passive cooldown will be scaling with level. At level 16, the cooldown is going down from 6 to 3 seconds, cutting it down by half. Especially since this will be in the late game, where players have a lot more health and items, the buff will certainly play a big part in teamfights and will allow him to remain relevant. That covers the jungle build, so let's move on to the mid lane next. We'll begin with another adjustment. Like with Shaco, Katarina is receiving some changes to encourage a different build. Thank goodness. Her AD ratios are being lowered, but attack speed and on-hit ratios are being increased. This really shows that Riot wants to encourage on-hit builds for her. And he's up for a buff next patch. The first change is that her Q will have its AP ratio increased. Like with Ivorin and Yorick, her pet Tibbers is also receiving extra durability. It's a pretty hefty buff actually, since Tibbers will have 20 more armor and MR into the game. Finally, we have a buff for Heimerdinger. His turrets are also receiving some extra health, but will also have their base damage increased. In the early game, it's only one more damage, but at later levels, it's going up to 5. In addition, his ease cooldown will be reduced by 1 second, increasing his team fighting power. Before moving forward, let me ask you our question of the day. Who are you having the most fun playing right now? I've been enjoying Mordekaiser a lot more after his buffs on patch 12.10. He feels like an actual juggernaut and it feels satisfying ulting somebody and demolishing them afterwards. Let me know your answers in the comments down below. We covered the mid laner, so let's move on to the bottom lane next. In the bot lane, we have a couple of nerfs to mention. The first is for Lucian. Currently one of the most contested picks in the game and sporting a dominant 20% ban rate, his base AD and Q's damage at later ranks is going to be reduced. It's a moderate nerf to his laning phase, as well as a minor one to his team fighting later on into the game. With some lost damage, it'll be harder for him to pick up the early game leads that he's known for, but I'm sure that he'll remain relevant even after these changes. Next on the list is Zeri. While she's going to receive increased health regeneration and health regen growth, her W will have its damage ratios decreased. A 10 base damage increase should probably offset this nerf early on, but it'll definitely feel a lot more noticeable as the game progresses, as the cooldown does scale down to only 8 seconds at max rank. With bot laners covered, we'll conclude the video with some support changes. We'll begin with the nerf to Janna. She's one of the strongest supports in the game right now, and in the patch, she's up for a variety of nerfs. Her W's bonus damage and slow will be lowered. Also, her E's shield strength and AP ratio will be reduced. With even less value on her shield, trades in the early game will play out less favorably for her and her lane partner. Also, the reduced slow can potentially decrease the amount of poke damage that she deals as getting a follow-up basic attack will be even more difficult. As enchanters have seen massively improved performances across the board, the one designed to slay them all is up for a buff. Blitzkrieg hasn't been performing too well recently, so he's receiving some damage buffs to his Q and his ultimate, ensuring that if he does land a hook, it'll be much easier to 100-0 his target. One more upcoming buff is for Seraphine. Her E is having its cooldown changed. Rather than scaling with rank, it'll be set at 10 seconds flat, but more importantly, the CC duration is being increased from 1 to 1.5 seconds. The increased utility should help her stand out a little bit more and play more of a supportive role during the laning phase as well as team fights. Finally, we have a couple of support adjustments. The first is for Soraka, who is also performing exceptionally well. While it's been a fun run, kinda, it looks like Riot is planning on undoing one of the massive adjustments that they previously gave her. Her ultimate will no longer remove Grievous Wounds, but in return, the healing will be increased. It definitely made Soraka unique, but the fact that Riot is reverting this change implies that it was likely assessed as unhealthy for the game. Concluding the changes is Yumi. She's receiving some adjustments to ensure that players need to take more risks with her. Thank goodness, I genuinely hate this champion so much. I don't even care if she's viable or weak, I just want her removed from the game. Anyway, her E's healing is going to be reduced, but in return, her passive shield is being increased. Thus, players will need to jump off their ally and go for a basic attack here and there if they want to contribute at a similar level to her current state. That wraps up all the upcoming changes for this patch, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and like always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Are there any big changes that Riot has missed? We hope that we can see them in the future, but for now, this is what we've got. And you guys know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.